everyone, my name is Mac and welcome back to another episode of Highlights from the Permanent Collection here at the Dishman Art Museum. I'm excited for us to be in the Eisenstadt Collection this week to talk about a woman artist who rose to international fame. The person who painted this piece behind me named Rosa Bonheur. Rosa Bonheur was born in Bordeaux, France in 1822, and from early childhood she had a very lively personality and open outlook on life. She grew up in a creative household, a mother who taught piano, younger siblings who would later find success in the arts as well, and a father who painted and believed in a dissolving of class and gender distinctions. Although she was born at a time when most women typically pursued domestic dependency, this was not Bonheur's fate. She had an intense love for animals that her mother introduced her to and her father fostered by offering artistic training. He would provide live creatures as models and encouraged her to copy images from books, draw sculptures, and eventually copy paintings at the Louvre. It became very apparent very soon that she was very gifted. She began to exhibit at the Paris Salon for the first time at the age of 19 and received medals for her work only previously achieved by men. In her late 20s, for a year and a half, Bonheur sketched at a horse market twice a week. As you can imagine, this was not typically a place women visited, and after being repeatedly harassed by men, she received a permit from the Paris police to be allowed to wear what was considered male's clothes to discourage attention, while also keeping her hair short and remaining her naturally masculine demeanor. During this venture, Bonheur created a large piece titled The Horse Fair, which debuted at the Paris Salon of 1853 and received much praise. At this point, Bonheur was well established as an animal painter, but this raised her success to a whole new level and even led to a meeting with the Queen of England, whom she was commissioned to paint works for. The horse fair was eventually purchased by the Metropolitan Museum of Art located in New York City, where it remains today, and this lucrative sale allowed her to buy her own chateau where she kept all kinds of animals, from horses and dogs to lions and otters all to paint from direct observation. Though Bonheur's art was considered traditional, her personal life was quite the opposite considering the time, adding to the groundbreaking nature of her success as a female artist. She was a feminist, she smoked, and though she is quoted saying, my private life is nobody's concern, it was known Bonheur was gay, and she had a long-term partner of 40 years named Natalie Mikas, who she had met at the age of 14. After Natalie's death, Rosa would become involved with the American painter Anna Elizabeth Klumpke, who became her partner and portraitist. The artist lived and worked in her brick chateau that was filled with taxidermy pets until her death in 1899. Today the house, located in France, serves as a museum dedicated to Bonheur, opened by Klumpke, offering guests a glimpse into her passionate approach to her practice. Klumpke also wrote Bonheur's biography and opened an art school for women in her honor. Our own Rosa Bonheur piece on display in the first floor of the Eisenstadt collection is titled Lion Cubs. It is unknown to us when the Eisenstadts acquired this piece, but it has remained in the Dishman since our 1993 acquisition of their entire collection. Compared to other pieces by the artist, the size is small, but the subject is one she visited again and again. Rosa had the courage to live a life that she wanted, and we are proud to own and be able to share a piece by a trailblazing, unapologetic woman who helped pave the way for other female artists. To wrap up this week's episode, I will read a quote by Rosa Bonner herself. Why shouldn't I be proud to be a woman? My father, that enthusiastic apostle of humanity, told me again and again that it was a woman's mission to improve the human race. To his doctrines, I owe my great and glorious ambition for the sex to which I proudly belong, whose independence I'll defend till my dying day. Besides, I'm convinced the future is ours. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Highlights from the Permanent Collection. We'll see you next time.